By the way, the, the church app is, what would you say, exciting and awesome? Right. Um, so we really do want to encourage you to check it out. Everything is on there. You can get our um, sermons. You can get um, sermon notes, sermon scriptures. You can check out all the different um, announcements, small groups. It is all on there. Jessica has been working really hard on it and has really has pulled it together. So very exciting. I, I would ask that you would check it out. Um, we're going to dig into the Word. I'm going to ask that you not check the app out um, right now. Sorry, Jessica. Uh, I sent her some scriptures, and, and um, well, they're just not going to apply anymore. That happens sometimes, right? You know, God decides um, what you were doing was not the best, even though you put a lot of time into it and effort, and he just wants to do something different. How many of you function like that sometimes, right? Yes. So if you'll bear with me just for a few minutes this morning, I, I felt like there's just something that um, the Lord wants to share with us. And so we're actually going to turn to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Timothy's got a saying that he likes to use quite often. If you flip through both First and 2 Timothy, um, we're, we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. And the saying is this, here is a trustworthy saying. He says it about three times, maybe a fourth if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he says this often. You know, and it's one of those phrases that you probably should pay attention to what's written after it. And um, this actually is a verse that's very near and dear to my heart. This is actually my confirmation verse from a long time ago. And this is what it says, chapter 2, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, starting in verse 11. Here is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless... He will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Amen. That's a great set of scriptures, right? I think I did a good job back in you know, the ninth grade picking out um, verses to kind of um, dictate, or maybe not dictate, but kind of help guide um, my life. Right? Don't you guys agree? Are you, are you guys out there? Okay. Yep, yep. Everybody is upset that we're not in the app. I understand. I don't know um, who needs to hear it this morning, and, and I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me, but I just want to share just a, a few brief thoughts on these verses. It says, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny or disown himself. You know, this is one of those sets of verses that kind of walks us through just a couple of different things, and then right at the end kind of flips the script for us and kind of takes us on this little journey. That's the, that's the new word of the day. We've got to walk on these journeys when we're supposed to be preaching. So I just want to take you on this little journey. And it starts with a really kind of harsh reality. If we die with him, we will also live with him. You know, it's exciting to live with him. It's one of the best things you can ever do. But in order to do it, we must die with him. You know, when Christ died, he gave up all that he was. For us, uh, a friend of mine did a did a thing. I've stolen a couple times, and, and he had people list on on one side all the attributes of of who God is, everything you could think of, and then all the negative attributes and all the sin that we could think of in our lives. And he and he used to put it up on his. You can imagine right here is his whiteboard, and uh, he put it up on the whiteboard, and he said at the cross, Jesus flip flopped the script, and Jesus took all of our negative, all of our sin, all of everything that we have on himself and gave up all of his things for us. He who knew no sin took sin upon himself. See, he died to all of the things that he had access to so that he could take our sins. And that's what he's asking from us and for us is that we're willing to die to everything that we hold dear, to everything that we believe, for everything that, that we want in our lives to give our life to him so that we can live with him. This morning I was actually going to teach out of uh, 2 Corinthians um, where Paul introduces the idea of uh, reference letters. You know, um, you, you ever heard of those recommendation letters? He's the one who introduced it. If you didn't, if you wonder where all those came from, you can check it out. Second Corinthians chapter three, he introduces the whole idea of recommendation letters. And, but my question, and look at, I'm actually going to get to the sermon. The question I had for us this morning is who is writing our story? Is it me or is it Christ? 
In order for Christ to be able to write that story, we, we've got to die with him so that we can live with him. And sometimes that means that we've got to experience some things of letting go, of letting go of, of past hurts, letting go of, of things that we hold dear, letting go of pain in our life so that we can live with him and let him write our story. If we die with him, we also live with him. And one thing I, I have learned over the years is there's no better way to live. No better way than to live with Christ. When we talk about being at peace in situations and having joy in situations, I find that every single time it's because I am living exactly where Christ wants me. I am in the will of God. And a lot of times when I don't have joy and when I, when I, and when I don't have peace and when I don't have patience and, and I have all the opposite things of the fruit of the Spirit, it's because I realize I'm not living with Him. I am holding fast to what I want to do. I'm holding fast to writing my own story and not letting it go. But every time I let it go and every time I step into that life, that fullness with Christ, there's a peace that washes over, even in the midst of massive uncertainty. We've, we've had the chance to do all kinds of different things in our life, and we talk about it often that sometimes it doesn't even feel like our, our, it was part of our life. It feels like it was part of some kind of alternate universe, if you believe in those things. Um, they're usually over here. And uh, I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, I don't know. Don't worry about it. But in all those uncertainties, when we changed and we went and we moved and, and we came here, there was lots of uncertainties. There was this peace that overrode everything. Because we realized we were dying for ourselves and living with him and trusting him to take us where he wanted. The second thing says, if we endure, we will also reign. This is one of those things that nobody really likes. All right, raise your hand if you're in, enjoying enduring. All right, enjoying enduring through quarantine. Enjoying uh, enduring through um, maybe your school's not opening. Maybe your job's not opening. Enduring. But it says if we're willing to endure, if we're willing to trust, if we're willing to walk with him, if we're willing to endure through those things, it says, basically it says the joy will come in the morning. It says that we will also reign with him. You know, sometimes it's, it's the hurt and it's the pain and it's the hard things we walk through that is where we learn the most. That's where we learn the most about who God is, who we are, who we are in him and who we are when we're not in him. But if we're willing to endure, if we're willing to hold on, even when we feel like we can't, what does the Scripture say? When you can't stand anymore, stand. Stand some more. God is calling us to endure because then we begin to reign. And as we die with Christ and as we endure, you, you, you'll begin to realize that what happens in your life is, is you begin to walk in those things called the fruit of the spirits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Those things, they don't come because you want them to. They don't come because you ask for them to. They come by walking close with Christ, by walking uh, with him each and every day. And if we begin to endure, you begin to have patience because you realize God's in control. And then when we reign with him, it begins to open up doors in our lives to, to share with other people, how do you walk through this so peacefully? How do you walk through the chaos of this life? How do you walk through the hardships of this life with peace and with joy and with hope and expectation? That's what it means to endure through these things, trusting that he is going to move. And then we reign with him. You see this idea that keeps happening. There's things we've got to let go. There's hardships we've got to walk through. But there's always that other side that we live with Christ and that we reign with him. And then he says, if you disown him, he will disown you. If, if, if you turn your back, he says, I, I, I'm going to disown you. What a dangerous and concerning place. But here is the most faithful. Uh, here is the, the, the best part of the scripture that I, I really think somebody here needs to hear. It says, if you are faithless, he will always remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. You know, sometimes we struggle with faith. We struggle with what is God doing, and, and we struggle with trusting him. We struggle, especially in times like this where it's weird and it's strange. We're, we're trying, where are you, God? And, but he's, what he's saying is, even in those times, he will always be faithful. 
And there's some of you here right now, you don't know what is going on in your life. You don't understand why it's happening. You don't understand uh, why you have to walk through these things. And you're wondering, why do I have to endure? Didn't I already endure? Do I have to endure some more? And God is saying to you this morning, you will reign with me because I am faithful. That he's going to meet you where you are. He's going to walk you through that valley. He's going to walk you through that dark place. And on the other side, you will see the glory of the Lord. You will see his faithfulness in your life. And you wouldn't exchange it and you won't exchange it for a thing because when he begins to reveal that plan to you, begins to reveal what he had in store for you, Man, that's when you become alive in Christ, when you begin to realize this is what he really wanted. Because we have all our own ideas, our own uh, con, you know, uh, preconceived ideas of what everything should look like, what our story should look like. And Christ is saying, I have something for you. I will always be faithful. I will always be there. That's not what I had planned, but I, I, I hope if maybe you're here or you're in uh, your, your living room or wherever you might be watching, I just want you to know the Lord is faithful. Forever and always, He is faithful. Even when you can't see it, even when you're not sure, He is faithful. And just a couple quick things. One, if you're in that time, make sure you're with other people. Man, if you're by yourself, it's a lot easier to begin going down that hole of darkness and depression and frustration and anger. But when you get around other people, who will remind you? Because often we need reminding. The, the Bible says it all the time, remember, 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 because we're horrible at remembering. You need people around you that will remind you the faithfulness of God. That will remind you of His goodness, will remind you of His grace, will remind you of His mercy, and see you walk through those things. He is faithful. He will see you through it. If you die to yourself and endure with him, you will live and you will reign with him because he is faithful. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful. That no matter what is going on in our life, no matter how things look, uh, Lord, that if we would look to you and if we would trust in you, we will see that every single time you are faithful to see your plans through, to see your name glorified. Lord, I pray that each and every person here, that each and every person here would gird themselves up and draw close to you, that they would put the things aside in their life that are not of you, that that are causing them distractions from you, Lord, that they would dwell with you, that they would endure with you, that they would reign with you. Lord, so I just pray for each person, Lord, that for breakthrough in those areas, wherever they're struggling, whatever it is that is going on, Lord, that they would see your faithfulness today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.